everybody, it's Rob from Man Sewing. In today's quick tip, we're gonna talk about cleaning out and reassembling the bobbin area in a drop-in bobbin sewing machine. That's right. So many of today's sewing machines have gone into the top load or the drop-in bobbin format, and it's very convenient and very easy for you to see when your bobbin's running low, but they do tend to build up more fuzz inside. No problem, easy for you to clean. But what I find from some of my quilting buddies is they have a hard time reassembling all the parts and pieces. So I'm gonna actually spend most of my time showing you how to put it back together. But we are talking about a drop-in bobbin assembly here and a couple of quick things about safety. Now, of course, I don't do this at home, but I'm gonna tell you to do this. Unplug the sewing machine so you don't stab yourself. I'm gonna take the needle out. I do actually do that one. So let's get in here. The needle is now out of the machine, okay? Machine is unplugged, powered down, obviously. I'm gonna also now take the presser foot off. We're going deep into this area here in a few minutes. It would be a wise choice for you, if you've never done this before, to pay attention to what you're doing right now because you're going to be reassembling this stuff. But I took the presser foot and the entire shank off. That's mostly just so I have the room to work. Now, check out this tool. Many of you probably have this thing in your toolbox and have no idea what it is. Like you're frustrated because you thought it was a pair of earrings, but you only got one, and that's only good for guys like me that have one earring. It's not an earring at all. It's a screwdriver of all things. So what this does is it drops in right here, and it's designed to get these very wide and beveled screws out, and I don't like scratching my screws if at all possible, because that could cause drag on your fabric. So I don't know if you noticed, but I basically broke them loose, but then I took them out with my fingers just by spinning them. So I've got a couple of screws that are coming out here. Set that aside. I'm gonna open my little bobbin door. I'm gonna take the bobbin out, but we certainly could get it out in a few minutes if we needed to, right? Now, all of these drop-in bobbin machines are similar, but also different. This happens to be a baby lock I'm, I'm working on right now. And so the stitch plate and the bobbin cover area are gonna come off in one piece. I've seen them come off in two pieces. Um, again, you know, this is also gonna probably be in the information in the maintenance section of your owner's manual. So if I remember correctly, this one, I just kind of pick out it from the back at first, and I'm gonna wiggle these two parts loose. Here, see how easy this is? <laughs> I actually have been playing with it a little bit, so I kind of left those loose for us there. So they're gonna come out in two pieces. Now, we're gonna do some inspections because we're checking for things that will cause frustration and problems down the road. So first thing I'm looking at is in my stitch plate, that cool little half, oh, that's a frowny face. Let's turn it upside down for now. Now it's a smiley face. That little smiley face opening is where the needle goes through. So I'm looking to see if I've ever hit it with a needle and left a little burr. If I've gotten a burr inside of there, I wanna take a little screwdriver um, or a nail file or something and just kind of soften that and smooth that as much as possible. Burrs in your stitch plates will catch thread and possibly cause your thread to break. Now, as we're getting in here closer, the next thing that comes out is your drop-in bobbin bobbin case. And some machines, you actually have to turn the hand wheel a little bit as you're wiggling to take this piece out. This piece also comes out, and I'm inspecting again for needle strikes. These pieces are usually made of a real high-density plastic, uh, but the needle will pierce right through, and that will cause your thread to hang up. The common places, if I can hold it just right, are gonna be right in here as well as right in this area here, you might see little holes where the needles pierce. And if that had happened, you can often see them from the back as well. I take the top side and I use my fingernail just to push that plastic back together. Um, I don't replace it until it becomes problematic, really. Now, come on over here in close. What we're gonna start doing is I'm gonna use one of these cool nylon brushes. You can see this is well loved. And I'm gonna start getting some of the fuzz and dust out of there, look at all this stuff that's coming out of here. I mean, it's just huge, right? And this is just a machine that is often well cared for and often maintenance, but with these drop and bobbins, we get a lot of fuzz that builds up inside. So I'm just kind of wiping as I go and I'm rotating the hand wheel as I go. And I'm just kind of cleaning around. Now, one of the things I don't ever do is I don't use those cans of spray air. The cans of spray air are actually uh, CO2 propelled, and after every three or four bursts, it shoots moisture in there. And so, funny enough, you don't wanna spray that moisture into a camera, a computer, or a sewing machine, and the only places I know to buy that spray air is a sewing store, a camera store, or a computer store. So, I'm recommending you don't, but if you wanna take this outside and take the giant air compressor that's out in the garage in your other workshop, right, and blast it with an air compressor, I am cool with that. 
So I'm going to go ahead and take another couple minutes and inspect and clean as I go around here. Some of your machines will say you should oil, some will say you shouldn't. I'm not saying a thing about that. I have my opinions, of course. Cleaning all of that. Now here comes what I consider to be a little bit more of the tricky part, putting it all back together. Now on our drop-in bobbins, there are going to be sometimes little markers, like on this cool baby lock, there's a little white arrow you see. That white arrow is going to line up with a part. This little nub is going to line up with a part. So as I bring it in here close, and try to go nice and slow for all of us, get some of this fuzz out of the way. I'm going to lay this in with my hands in your way, and then I'm going to show you what I've done. So. When you're looking real close, the white arrow on this is lined up with a white dot. So there's a dot and there's an arrow there. And then that nub I was pointing out goes against this little spring. That little spring is actually what's considered a position finger and your thread will come through there. It's funny enough, that's actually what makes a little bit of noise. Your machine will run quiet or almost silent without thread in it. You thread it and that spring going thong, thong, thong causes the noise while you're making a stitch. Right now, this is very loose because the back end of the stitch plate here has got a locking mechanism that's going to hold that in place. You do not want your bobbin case moving around at all. Um, it, well, that's not fair. It's going to have just a teeny bit, like a two or three degree of play in there. Like it might move this much, but it's not going to really spin. If it really spins, you do not have it set in there correctly. And that's how you poke it with your needle. Once you're sure that you do have it in perfect though, then on this particular machine, a lot of times both of these parts come out together, but they go in individually. So we start with the metal and the metal is going to drop back in here. And now the cool thing about the metal, and I should have pointed out, I've dropped my feed dogs. I lower the feed dogs when I'm working in the machine this way, keeps me from scratching the feed dogs or scratching the stitch plate. And these little screws here, let's see if I can do this have a little bevel to them. And so I put in both screws at the same time and I finger tighten them until they're both in place. The bevel helps cause that metal plate to really get lined up perfect so that your feed dogs are not dragging on your stitch plate. So I'm just gonna finger start that. And the reason we finger start things is to, we don't, we don't wanna strip out the screw heads. If you start to take in a screwdriver, you can apply too much pressure. So that's why people always tell you, oh, just finger tighten it first. There we go. Now that I have it finger tightened, then I get my earring with its missing companion here, and I start to tighten that up. I've tried to position the machine so it looks just like it looks for you, which means I'm working backwards here, and I'm getting better and better at it all the time. But it does make me feel like I've got three left hands. There we go. So now that's locked in. That's not moving at all. Now we're going to be able to bring in our bobbin cover. And on this one, it kind of sets in the front of the machine and slides towards me at the back of the machine now, or would be sliding away from you because you're sitting at the machine. At this point, I'm going to quietly listen, making sure I'm not hearing anything weird happening at all. And then I would be replacing this with a brand new needle. And I often have a hard time getting the needle in from the back of the machine. So let's see how we do here. Cross your fingers. Oh, it's almost like I've been practicing that. And now I'm going to go ahead and rotate and listen again. And I want to make sure I'm not hearing a twang, twang, twang sound, which means my needle is hitting something because I've been working around in there. I don't ever want to hear that needle hitting anything. Once that is all locked back in place though, it's as easy as get your bobbin back in, get your foot back in, get your iron heated up, get your rotary cutter sharpened, get your fabric all chosen, and you are ready to be making a killer project on your newly cleaned out sewing machine. And while you're busy doing that, I'll be making cool stuff for you here at Man Sewing. <laughs>